Hello. Hi. How are you? I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself through it all. Yeah, I'm trying to get this thing right, but that's all right. Praise God. Hopefully it's, well, it'll have to do. So let me know if it's clear, if you can see me clearly. If all is well, please press clear. And you know why I have to, um, I'm still not seeing anything. So somebody just write clear for me, please. As you can see, the title is Res the Spirit Residue Spirit. The Residue Spirit. Um, I love the way that people are catching on to that. God, I had never heard that before, to be honest with you. God had gave me that may maybe a couple of years ago. I was um, I was at my armor bearer's. Well, actually, I was at my armor bearer's house, and she had this very beautiful color of eyeshadow and so um I use my own Q tip, you know, or you know, whatever we use, right? And so long story short, I went home and I think it was the next day I wanted to wear the same color again. And God said, apply it. I said, I sure will. It was pretty on my face. I'm thinking I'm, you know, doing it, but God is getting ready to teach me something. So long story short, I put it on and it looked as if I had dipped it in her eyeshadow. And, you know, and I was like, oh my God, that's, it's amazing how it looks like I'm using her eyeshadow again. And God said, that's the residue spirit, Deanna. And I had never heard that. Like I said, my whole life, I said, God, what do you mean? He said, the residue spirit it looks like it's gone, but it's not. It's just laying dormant. You know, it, it, I mean, it's on the brush, right? And, and I'm talking about it's looking just like as I'm, as if I was dipping it again in her eyeshadow, right? And I said, God, explain more. So he said, Deanna, that's what's taking out my people. You think you're saved. You think you're holy. You think that you are not doing this or think you, you know i mean it, it, feel, it makes you feel like you got it all together but what's happening is it's laying dormant and what happens is the enemy knows it so he'll send that thing that thing what is the residue whatever that thing is you know what that thing is that you thought you had had beat that you thought you weren't gonna do no more that you thought you won't come on somebody hallelujah and he said that's the biggest thing that's taken the end the antichrist spirit he knows it that's what's happened to bishops apostles leaders that's what's happening a lot of you, you you always ask me you say why aren't the others speaking because they are tainted and contaminated come on somebody hallelujah you see that's what that's what the residue spirit really is you're looking holy but you're really not holy you're talking holy but you're really not holy you're acting saved but you're really not saved oh come on somebody y'all not hearing what i'm saying that's a red residue spirit that's laying dormant and what happens is the enemy already knows this so what he does is he says hey i got something for you and because you have not dealt with that spirit let's just be real because you were not truly healed and delivered you bite okay give it to me oh come on somebody hallelujah and God said that's the biggest weapon against the church right now. That's why they're not talking to y'all. Well, why are you the only one talking about the Antichrist? Why are you the only one talking about end times? The rest of them are so caught up in their money and their fame. They can't see what I'm talking about, honey. Because And I'm not talking about like I'm all that. I'm just being real. I stay rooted and grounded. You see, when people try to... Let me, let me tell you how this big thing works, okay? Let's say you're in the body of Christ. And, and, and believe it or not, you, you, you're you in a safety net. But what happens is, or, or better yet, you're in a home. Let's just put it as an uh, anonym and synonym like a, as a, you're in a home. And what happens is the enemy says, come out and play. I got just what you want. You know you want that money. I got it all for you. I got fame. I got money. I got that man you want. I got that woman you want. I, I, I got what you want. And most of you, you step outside and, and you tell, God, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to be right. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And you don't understand. You go outside of the safety net and then you fall and you do that thing. And now, months later or even days later, I hear it and I see it all the time. How did that happen to me? I was strong in the Lord. What happened? Easily. You went from safety. And you thought that you was big and bad enough. It, I, I guess the, the best story in the Bible to really sum this up. And this was my first, first, first message. Samson and Delilah. Samson loved the Lord. And Samson was with the Lord. And the Lord was with Samson. But what happened? 
that residue spirit and that devil he'll call you out to play and God had told him from the beginning do not take strange women but what happened he loved the way she looked as a matter of fact the Bible said he loved Delilah but you know what I, I got in that that Bible and I dissected it I never found where she said she loved him back y'all don't hear me you love playing with the enemies but the enemy don't love you and while you sitting up there playing God told me to tell you the enemy he's real he wants to steal he wants to kill and his ultimate goal is to destroy you and the church and that's what's happening in this hour there's no sound doctrine you want you want people to preach what you want them to preach and, and I'm, I'm I was gonna tell it what it is what's wrong with the church right now the residue spirit is everybody want to be blessed everybody want money so y'all chasing after money y'all taste a paradigm shifts I mean y'all just y'all whatever it takes I, I gotta be successful I gotta do me You'll leave God to go chase after money as if God going to tell you to go chase after something. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The second thing for single women chasing after a man. As a matter of fact, y'all go in a club and get a man and then try to fix him up for the church house. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's be real. And hold on, men. You do the same thing. You go get big booty Judy that you saw at, 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 at Skeezer's night. Come on, somebody. Let's just be real. And then you'll try to bring her in the house of God and try to make her a wife. And then you wonder why she messing around with everybody in the church. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You can't go out of the room of God and get something that's not of God and bring it back into the room of God and think that it's going to act like God, talk like God, walk like God, be like God. The devil is a lie. Now, I'm not saying that God don't save people. That's not what I'm saying. So come on, somebody. I don't need somebody to go on and say, well, this is what she said. No, I'm saying what I'm saying. Stop running after people that don't want you. And don't want your God. That's that's it. That's the three things that's taking the church down. Money, fame, men, and women. And some of you just so nasty. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to tell it today because God told me to tell it. I, some of y'all so nasty. Yes, you are. I, I, and I'm going to tell you how. One day I was rolling. And I was strolling through Facebook. And you know whatever you like on Facebook. I told you Facebook the devil. They be telling what you like. And I don't know why I did this, but God told me to do it, so I did it. Y'all know, y'all know the sing the R and B singer Trina. Oh yeah, I'm about to put. I can call your name out there. That's a good thing, Trina. So God said, click on and watch you follow her. because you know when you click on the page, you, it'll show you your friends, right? It'll show you 89 friends following 90. I was appalled. We had men of God following Trina, and you know Trina don't hardly wear nothing. But I know, I know that y'all Trina fine, huh? But I, I'm, I'm like. Man of God, you you following Trina? Trina can treat every now and then. Trina got a foul mouth. Man of God, oh y'all don't hear me. Women of God, y'all be following them too. Y'all be following those men that that's not of God. Y'all be uh, Tyrese. You could click on Tyrese. I'm just being real with y'all. Oh, but he fine and he be talking about God. <laughs> Boy, y'all y'all a mess. Y'all better stop playing. We are not in the season. Y'all better stop playing. And that's when I'm up here trying to say y'all better stop playing. That residue spirit will take you out. That's what's happening. Why do you think men and women are dying? Men and women of God, by the way. Because y'all playing with that forbidden fruit. Just like in the beginning. Come on, somebody. You see, that fruit, it never left. Oh, y'all don't hear my, what I'm saying. That spirit of biting that but forbidden fruit have never left. And God said it would not leave. Come on, somebody. If you go back to Genesis, I can show you what he said. It would never leave. It will always be a tempter. Because that's what's the beginning and it's the end. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Just like it was the beginning of the Christ, of Christ's blood. That, that I mean, the shed of blood, actually. The blood started this covenant between me, us, and God. And the blood go in the covenant. Bloodshed. Persecution. Y'all, uh, it's too deep for y'all, huh? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Beginning is always the same as the end. I don't know if y'all realize that. Let's go back. Slavery. Y'all think it's not coming again? It was in the beginning. It should be in the end. Y'all not listening to me. We're in biblical days all over again. The only difference is you have technology now. That's the only difference. You have technology. And I'm telling you right now. God told me to tell you. Who do you really want? Mm, what you mean apostle? You want God. Or you want the things of the world. Be real with yourself. Because to be honest with you. Most of y'all, y'all do love God. I can attest to that because I, I, I can see it. I can see it even through Facebook. I can see spirits. You really love God. But I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you. <laughs> God told me to ask you. I wrote it down too. What's in your heart?
Mm. Because here's the deal. Some of you love God, but you want what you want, how you want it, when you want it. And honey, let me tell you something. You talking to somebody that have lived it and tried to play slick and sly with God, that's the wrong one. Because God will expose you to you first and then everybody else second. Come on somebody, hallelujah. God is not trying to make your life miserable. God said, I've come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But you know the problem with y'all? Y'all don't like abundance. Some of you just like to, and I'm going to be real with you. I like to have fun. Some of you like to drink. Well, you know, and y'all find a scripture for which I want to do too. Well, you know, Jesus drunk wine. He turned water into wine. <laughs> Alcoholic 101. <laughs> I used to say the same thing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Let's be real. I mean, it, it, stop playing. Stop playing in this hour. And that's what's happening. That's that residue spirit that's getting y'all. And, and I see other leaders are speaking, are, are picking up the um that spirit. I think I, I think I ought to write a book about it, right? Since God gave it to me, huh? Don't you think so? <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. I'm always trying to be funny if you catch it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm telling you, God said that that's the biggest weapon against the church right now is that residue spirit. How do I deal with that residue spirit, apostle? Be real with yourself and stop playing. You know, and I use myself as a transparent person on purpose because most most leaders won't. And that's what y'all need, I, I feel, to believe. Praise God. That's what my spirit tells me. But I'm going I'm to put myself in it. When I got tired of playing, I asked God, I said, God, I can't do this by myself. I said, let's just be honest. I said, so show me the areas that I need to work in. And he showed me all of them. And I literally cried. I cried like a baby. I said, God, God will show you. He said, you really want to see who you are? Let me show you. I cried. I was like, God, really? He said, yes. Because some of you don't even see it. You don't see it. You don't see it. You haven't asked the question. And when people tell you, you say, oh, they hate. And nobody hate on you. They see your ugly self. All right, come on, somebody, hallelujah. And you want to get mad. Get mad at what? Constructive criticism? You crazy. Yeah, you crazy. And I'm telling you, I asked God. I said, okay, God. Now, after I asked him to, I said, show me. Show me how to do it. God sent people. God sent somebody that walked in integrity. They showed me how to walk in integrity. And God sent somebody with wisdom. God sent somebody with a word of knowledge. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And then some people had all of these things. Consistency. That's it. That's how you beat the devil. Consistency. I'm not saying being perfect, but be faithful. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. That's the, That's it in a nutshell. But some of you are not even faithful. Mm -mm, no, you're not. You're not. You try to be. You want to be. But you don't know how. Get off your high horse. Ask the Lord. And guess what? Don't frown on the people that he sent. Don't run them away because you don't want nobody to tell you about yourself. Don't y'all understand that? That's one thing about this world. It's true. Everybody has rules. And I used to think that when I was young, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm my own person. That was the biggest lie I ever told myself. That is not true. We all are connected directly or indirectly. And guess what? It does matter what you do because it affects somebody else too. Hallelujah. Especially if you have a calling on your life. Stop being selfish and get yourself together. Quit playing. And and, and the other half don't want to quit playing because it feel good. While you feeling good. You die the day tomorrow, you're going to hell. Oh, yeah, I'm just straight to the cut. Ain't no sense in playing, right? While you are in sin, and, and I'm going to ask a question. I answer a question that people ask me all the time. Is the Spirit with you when you're in sin? I'm going to say it slowly so you can answer your own question. Is the Spirit present with me if I am in sin? Now, let's go to Scripture. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in an unclean temple. Hello, the, the the Holy Spirit is not present when you're doing sin, when you're smoking, when you're drinking, when you're having sex. You think, oh, you think the Holy Spirit in on that? The devil is a lie. Come on, somebody. So that's why people are get cut off in their sin. That's why sin is very dangerous. You need to read the book of James. The first chapter is very, and you can't say God tempt you because God say, I'm too holy. I don't tempt with sin. Come on. He said, I can't even be tempted. So he said, but you are drawn away by your own lust, your own desire. So, so you can't even blame everybody else because it comes back to you. In order to truly be a strong man and woman of God, you got to be real with you. And you got to be very brutally honest with yourself. And then, if you really want to change, you're going to have to do something that you've never done. 
Because some of y'all doing the same thing. You're going round and round and round and round. Then you get frustrated with God. Get frustrated with people. Get frustrated with yourself. Then you get sad. Then you get depressed. Then you get vexed. Come on, somebody. Which I rebuke all those things in the name of Jesus. When all you got to do is say, you know what? I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you and stop blaming what happened in the past, the present, or even today. You still have a choice. You got to start making good choices. And guess what? I'm going to tell you what else to Y'all weak-minded. I'm sorry. I'm just being real. Because I was weak-minded. I had to ask God. God, build me up. I had to pray to God. Make me mentally strong. Because if you're weak-minded, for men, you see Big Booty Judy, and you run straight to her house and have sex with her. For women, you see um, Smooth George, you, you be in his house at 2.30 in the morning, too. You have to ask God for a strong mind. So, therefore, you can say, no devil. You are a liar. I, I rebuke you. Y'all don't hear me. I said in a nutshell, y'all making it so hard. It, it, it's, it's always been simple. And the crazy part is people capitalize off of y'all and y'all don't even see it. Y'all go pay people to for a word. When, when all you got to do is sit at your house and ask God, God, hello, it's me. And say your name because you already know you. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Everything that you're running around looking for is right inside you. The thing is, though, are you ready to deal with it? Did, I realize people know who they are and they know what they do. Come on, let's be honest. It's just that, are you really ready to change? Are you really ready to live? You know, I was talking to a student, and I'm not going to say no name. We were just going around in circus last night after class, and I ain't going to lie, I just asked, I said, hold on. Do you want to live for God? Let's just be real, because if you don't, you might as well just hang up the phone, go do what you do, call me back in two, three months, or two, three years, whatever. And I'm not judging and condemning no, but I'm just being real. Stop playing, be real. You want God, do the things that you got to do to change because you know what time it is. You don't want God, go out there, keep doing what you're doing until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Or to God, pull that card. What's that card? Oh, you know that card. Something happened that, that changed your whole life and then you be real good. You be like, Lord, please. Come on, we all been there. And then, then we asking, begging God, please get me out of this. Y'all don't hear me. It's that residue spirit, people. I'm going to write a book about it. I promise you. I'm, I really am too. I'm, I'm getting ready to write a book about the residue spirit. Everything that God showed me about it. How how real it is. And how it, it, it'll lay dormant. And make you think that you got it made. I'm talking about. And it did it to me. So I know what I'm talking about. Make you think. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. 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 And the next thing you know. You just fell on your face. And you'll be like. Oh. Somebody lied to me. Somebody lied to me. And it's not funny. It, it, it's, it's, it's really. It's like. He's tricking you. The devil likes to play mind games. Be real with yourself. That's the greatest gift you can give yourself and God. Hallelujah. So I just want to tell you all about the residue spirit. I got to go in my class, but um, I might be back. You guys, when I teach that class, you got to understand. It's like I'm preaching, so I'll be... <sighs> so, you know, I know last night I said I was coming back on. I do apologize because I tried to be a woman of my word. That's integrity, point blank. But I was too worn out. Hallelujah. But I do have things that the Lord want me to reveal and release. So I will be back. I'll try. Let me put it that way. So God bless you. I pray that when, when you see me get on here, I want y'all to know. I, I can't let if it's two people on here. I am really serious about ministry. Meaning that I want to get out what God tell me to get out. I don't ever just get on here and be just shooting from the hip. I always, I write it down, know what God want me to say, but I write it down just to make sure that I don't miss a beat. That's another thing. A lot of y'all don't operate in excellence. I bet you if you had that job, you at that job, $50, $70 an hour, maybe $20 an hour, maybe $10 an hour. All y'all y'all do everything A, B, C, D. Why is it the things of God you just, you better give God what is God's and, and Caesar's what is